Good day to everyone. It's a new day, meaning to say it's a new learning for us. I am Arvin S. Enriquez, your subject teacher for probability and statistics. Our lesson for this day is about constructing probability distributions. Our lesson objectives at the end of this lesson, you are expected to illustrate a probability distribution for a discrete random variable and its properties. Compute probabilities corresponding to a given random variable. And construct the probability mass function of a discrete random variable and its corresponding histogram. Before moving forward to our lesson, which is your constructing probability distribution, let's do it first for, uh, for this free assessment activity, recalling the definition of your probability. So, redefine your probability as the study of randomness, or by simply using a formula, your probability is equal to your desired outcomes over your total possible outcomes. Now, let's try to apply this concept. In your entry card, we are asked to find the value of the probability of the following events, or what are the probability that we can map on the events included in this table. In your first event, getting an even number in a single roll of die. So let's try to use this number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Your 1 represent 1 pace in your die up to 6 since there are 6 paces in a single die. Now, your 1 represent your 1 dot, your 2 represent your 2 dots, your 3 represent your 3 dots, 4 represent your 4 dots, your 5 represent your 5 dots, and 6 for 6 dots. Now, we are asked to find the value of your probability that we can map in getting an even number. Let's define first what is an even number. An even number or even numbers, these are numbers no, that are divisible by 2. So from 1 to 6, there are 3 numbers who are divisible by 2. These are 2. 4 and 6. Meaning to say, once we, we roll a die, there are three desired outcomes. So our desired outcomes is equal to 3. Because there are only three even numbers from 1 to 6. These are 2, 4, and 6. Now, what will be the total possible outcomes in rolling a die. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are considered as the number of total possible outcomes. So meaning say there are 6 total possible outcomes. So the probability in getting an even number in a single roll of a die is 3 over 6. Or we can get the lowest term of this by simply dividing both your numerators and denominators by 3. So if we divide your 3, a short in a numerator you know, by 3, that will be 1. And for your denominator, which is 6 divided by, two, by 3, I mean, that will be 2. So your probability will be equal to 3 over 6 or simply the lowest term of this is 1 half or 0.5. Now, let's move forward in your event number 2. What is the probability that we can map in getting a sum of 6 when 2 dice are rolled? So this first column or set of numbers from 1 to 6 will represent the number of pieces for your first die. Then, this 
second set of numbers no, from 1 to 6 represent the number of pieces of your second die. So once we roll a die, no, or we roll two, two dice, no, when we roll two dice, no, what is the probability that we can map in getting a sum of 6? Now, let's first try to map this one in your first die, no, to one in your second die. Same thing with your uh, no, 2 in your second die. We're going to map 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, and 1 to 6. Same thing with your 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, meaning to say, there are 36 as your total uh, possible outcomes. So, there are 2 will be pioneered by to 1, 2 to 2, then 3 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, then 2 to 6. Same thing with 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, 36 is the total possible outcomes. If we're going to match this one this first set of numbers that will represent the number of pieces in the in your first die that will be matched to or that will be partnered to the second set of numbers that will represent the, the, the number of pieces in your second die. Now if we roll a two die or two dice I mean no what is the probability that we, uh, we can map in getting a sum of 6? So if we map 1 to, to 5, no, that will be your first uh, possible outcome because 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. Let's try to look at your 5. No? If we partner this 5 to 1, no, that will be your second possible outcome. Because 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. Same thing with 3. So, if we partner this 3 from your first die, you know, to the 3 in your second die, the sum of these two numbers is equal to 6. So, that will be your third possible outcome. Now, if we partner this 2 to 4, 2 from your first die and 4 from your second die, so 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Same thing with 4, no? If we partner your 4 your, from your first die to your 2 from your second die, so since 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, therefore, we consider this one as one of your possible outcomes. Or outcomes, I mean. So, meaning say there are five total desired outcomes. So, our probability that we can map no, in getting a sum of six when two dice are rolled is equal to five over 36. So, that will be your probability for your event number two. For your event number three, so, what will be the probability that we can map in this event? Getting an ace when a card is drawn from a deck. So, in a single deck of cards, there are 52 cards. So, meaning say, we consider those 52 cards as your total possible outcomes. Now, we are asked to find the probability in getting an ace only. Then, we, cannot, uh, we did not consider your jokers. So, there are only 52 cards in a single deck. So, what will be the probability in getting an ace? We know that there are four aces no, in a single deck of cards. Therefore, that will be your desired outcomes. So, 4 over 52 is the probability that we can map, no? in getting an ace when a card is drawn from a deck. 
So if you try to look again with your 4 and 52, these two numbers are divisible by 4. So we can divide this numerator and denominator by 4. So 4 divided by 4, it's 1. So if we divide 52 by 4, it's 13. So therefore, our probability for event number 3 is 4 over 52 or its lowest term, 1 over 13. Our lesson introduction, decision making is an important aspect in business, education, insurance, insurance I mean, and other real life situation. Why is that we consider your decision making is an important? Sir Bucket, most of the students will ask, Sir Bucket, mahalagang decision making. Because in a single wrong move or in a single wrong decision, in a light, no? it will change everything. It can turn positive to negative or negative to positive. Meaning to say, it can ship or it can break our dreams. No? That's why decision making is important. Most especially in business, education, insurance, and other real life situations that we can uh, integrate this concept. So many decisions are made by assigning probabilities to all possible outcomes pertaining to the situation and then evaluating the result. So we we are assigning no the probabilities to each possible outcomes. So, in a table, wherein we assign a variable no, that will represent, for example, we assign variable y to represent the number of tails in each possible outcomes. So, you're going to count this uh, number of tails in each possible outcome. Then, you're going to assign or you're going uh, uh, to put a probability that we can map on each uh, random variable or possible values of a random variable there. So therefore, there should be a probability in each possible outcomes. Because we're going to count how many times this number no, reflects the value of your random variable. So from that uh, note, we can compute the probability that we can map in each possible outcomes. Now, the question is, bakit na naman malagay ang sir, no? Because from the probabilities, by simply using your table, by simply using your histogram, we can visualize what will happen. So what are the things that we can do uh, to improve, no? To develop something. For example, a Jolly Tree Corporation, no? Before they put up our before sila mag-decide no, to put up a branch for a certain uh, place, no, they con conduct a feasibility, st uh, feasibility study, a survey. No? So from that survey, from that feasibility study, we can gather or the data that we can gather no, from that feasibility study and survey na kinakonduct ng uh, Jollibee Corporation no, before sila mag-put up ng brands for a certain place is we can assess no, if this uh, branch uh, is magiging perfect ba for the people na nandun sa place na yon Yung pi mga tao ba na nakapaligod doon is capable to sustain yung business na yon capable ba silang bumili doon yung presyo bang in offer ng uh, branch na yon is kaya ng mga tao no na nandoon sa lugar na yon kaya ba nilang bumili kaya ba nilang i-sustain yung business kung bara from the data no that we can gather no from your uh, from the feasibility study and the survey na kinakontak nga ng Jollibee Corporation before sila mag-put up ng brand sa isang lugar, 
then we are going to assign now a probability. So, from that probabilities, no, maglilis down tayo ng mga possible outcomes. Then, we're going to put a probability in each possible outcomes. From that probabilities, no, by simply graphing, no, by simply using your histogram, I mean, then we can visualize if magiging successful ba itong branch na to or hindi. That's why it is important for us to know the concept of your constructing probability distribution. Because at some point, it will help us know to visualize what are the things that we need to improve. What are the things that we need to stop? What are the things that we need to continue? So by simply assessing the values of your probabilities, by simply visualizing these uh, uh, the things that we need to do and to uh, continue or to stop, no? by using your histogram, mabibisualize po natin kagad kung ano ba yung kailangan natin ituloy, kaya ano ba yung mga kailangan natin adapt, ano ba yung kailangan natin itigit. So that's uh, the use of this lesson. So, for instance, no, another example, for instance, an insurance company might be able to assign probabilities to the number of vehicles a family owns. This information will help the company in making decisions regarding future financial situations. The situation requires the use of random variables and probability distribution. With the concept of random variable and probability distribution, it really helps these insurance companies, uh, companies, no, uh, to visualize more, no, what will be the effect, no, what will be the scenario after five years, after ten years, with the numbers of vehicles a family can own, no. So from that probabilities to the to the number of vehicles a family owns, no, they can easily visualize what will happen. Kung ano ba yung track na papunta yung insurance company na yon. So, this information will help the company, sabi niya, in making decisions regarding future financial situations. So, in deciding, no, for the future financial situation of this insurance company, right after, ay, before sila mag-decide for the future financial situations, no, they need to deal with the probabilities uh, aligned to your random variable for us to decide what will be the strategy. No? Kung ano ba yung mga strategies na gagawin nila, kung ano ba yung kailangan nilang stop, ano ba yung kailangan nilang bawasan with, uh, sa mga in-offer ng, uh, ng companies nila. No? That's why it is important, no, that we know how to deal with your random variables and probability distribution. Because we can visualize what will happen. Or it will serve as our basis, no? Before we conclude, before we decide if we're going to continue or we need to stop something, no? Or we need to adapt something for us to be more success, uh, successful someday as individual. And most especially, no, the concept is applicable also with education, insurance, and other real-life situations. No? Because parang connected na eh, no, with the concept that, the, uh, that these random variables and probability distribution brought to us, are connected to or it can serve as our basis no before we decide for something kasi from this concept mabibisualize mo na kagad what will happen what are the things that we need to stop what are the things that we need to continue what are the things that we need to adapt for our discussion points a discrete probability distribution or a probability mass function consists of the values a random variable can assume and the corresponding probabilities of the values. 
So it's another term lang for prob uh, discrete probability distribution. So magkaroon pa. There are questions, no, from some students, no. So, magkaiba po ba yung discrete probability distribution at probability mass function? Definitely not. So, it's another term of your discrete probability distribution. So, the another term, I mean, of your discrete probability distribution is your probability mass function. So, sabi ito, consists of the values, no, a random variable can assume and the corresponding probabilities of the values because in each uh, possible values of your random variable, there, is, there should be a corresponding probabilities. And before we consider, you know, if we construct a table containing your you know, uh, random variable and your and the corresponding probability, we need to check first, you no. Know, if the total or sum of those probabilities is equal to 1. So, we cannot consider your table no, as a probability distribution table if the total or sum of those probabilities under the table is not equal to 1. So, please do take note of that. No? A table no, with your random variable and their corresponding probabilities before you consider that table as a probability distribution table, you need to get the sum or total of those probabilities under that table. If the sum or total of those probabilities is equal to 1, then the table is a probability distribution table. So if not equal to 1, then your table is not a probability distribution table. So let's continue with our discussion points. For our illustrative example, finding the probability corresponding to a given random variable. So the title for this experiment is the number of t's. So with our first video, we're done with this experiment. Suppose three coins are toes. Let y be the random variable representing the number of t's that occur. Find the probability of each of the values of the random variable y. So please do take note of this. No? We use your letter y as your random variable that will represent the number of things that occur. So lagi pong sinasabi ng problem yan. Hindi po tayo manguhula ng letter as your random variable. Or a letter, no? Any letter can be your random variable, pero lagi pong sinasabi ng problem, what letter are you going to use? So in this experiment, we use letter Y to represent the random variable, again, that will represent the number of things that occur. Now, we're asked to find the, the probability of each, uh, of each of the values of the random variable Y. Because there should be, no, there should be a probability that we can map, no, in each possible uh, values of this random variable y. Because your probability will be dependent how many times this random variable or how many times this uh, values reflect as a value of your random variable y. So, as part of the solution for our illustrative uh, example, let's deal with this step number one as continuation of our discussion points. In your step number one, we need to determine first the sample space. When we define your sample space, these are a uh, list of all possible outcomes in your experiment. So, let H represent head and T represent T. Now, we're going to list down all the possible outcomes that we can get from our experiment using three coins. So, with our first video, we're, we're done with this experiment. So, there are eight uh, possible outcomes no, that we can get from, from this experiment using or with the involvement no, of three coins. We know that every coin, no, there are uh, two pieces in every coin, so tail and head. Now, from this experiment with the involvement of three coins, there are 
e total possible outcomes. So let's start. No, we need to list down first no those possible outcomes. So your sample space is equal to your tail 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 comma tail tail head comma tail head tail comma head tail tail comma head head tail comma up to the last uh, up to the last possible outcome which is your head head head. Again, from this experiment with the involvement of your three coins, there are eight. Uh, possible outcomes which start from tail 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 up to head 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 so it depends on you kung paano mo uh, list down yan no? hindi naman ibig sabihin with my uh, solution tail 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 to is tail 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 din kapag ikaw yung nag solve nung problem and it's a tail 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 yan so kahit magkabalik tad balik tad yung ano yung 8 possible outcomes na yan it's fine. Hindi po yun uh, problema. Kung baga, kahit magbaligtad-baligtad po, itong walong possible outcomes natin, okay lang po yun. As long na tama yung possible outcomes na makukuha mo. Tama yung pag-match mo or tama yung pagpapartner mo doon sa ating, uh, yung involvement ng ating phases ng, in a single coin, no? to another coin, and to another coin. For number two, we need to construct a table in your first column. If you try to look at this table, no? in your first column, here is your possible outcomes. Total of eight. No? In your second column, these are possible values of your random variable y. No? That will represent, no? That represent, I mean, the number of tails in each possible outcome na meron tayo. For your first possible outcomes, since we're asked to count, no? The number of tails in each possible outcome na meron tayo dito sa ating table, that will represent the possible values of your random variable y. For your first possible outcome, there are three tails. I mean, the say, the value of your random variable y is equal to 3. Same thing with your possible outcome number 2. So you're going to count the number of tail. So since there are two tails in your second possible outcome, therefore your random variable y is equal to 2. Up to the last possible outcome, which is your head, head, head. Since random variable y represents the number of tail, Meaning, say, for the value of your random variable y in the last possible outcomes, no? Outcome, I mean, no? That will be equal to zero because there is no tail in the last possible outcome from our list. In your step number two, what you need to do is to count, no? The number of tails in each outcome in the sample space and assign this number to this outcome. So you're going to count lang, no? Whatever your random variable will represent. If yung problem is sinasabi ang i-represent, uh, i-represent yung random variable mo, yung number of heads, then you're going to count for the number of heads in each possible outcome na meron po tayo dito sa first column natin. Since we mentioned ng problem natin with your illustrative example, no? We mentioned niya, that you're going to count or you're going to use your random variable y to represent the number of things in each possible outcome. Therefore, you're going to count for the number of things in each uh, possible outcome. So, meron po tayo dito sa table natin. Let's go now with your step number three. So, there are four possible values of the random variable y representing the number of things these are 0, 1, 2, and 3. Assign probability values P of Y to each value of the random variable. So if you try to look again with your table, no? in your second column, there are four numbers that reflect as a value of your random variable Y that will, uh, that will represent the number of tails in each possible outcome. Now, the numbers that reflect there is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So there are four numbers there that reflect as a value or we consider them as your possible values of the random variable. 
Because these are numbers that reflect, no? If we're going to count again the number of tails in each possible outcomes, these are numbers that reflect as a possible values, no? That reflect as a value of your random variable y. So we consider them as your possible values, no? Of your random variable y. These are 0, 1, 2, and 3. As part of the continuation of step number 3, we're asked to construct the probability distribution or the probability mass function of a discrete random variable y. So if we try to look again with this table, under your second column here, these are numbers that reflect as a value of your random variable y that will represent the number of tails no, in each possible outcome na meron tayo dito sa ating first column. So for this table, for your probability distribution table or for the probability mass function of a discrete random variable, we're going to list down the four numbers that reflect as a possible values of your random variable y. So this will be your 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, what will be the probability that will be mapped in each uh, possible values that reflect as the value of your random variable. So if you try to look at your, ano, no, this table, with your first table, I mean, no, and let's try to define first what is the probability again, no. Your probability is your desired outcomes over your total possible outcomes. Why is that 1 over 8 is the probability that will be mapped to 0? So, ayun po yung tanong, bakit 1 over 8 ang probability na 0? Again, let's go back with this, you know, with this table. So, pag nakita niyo po yung 0 in your second column, once lang po yun nag-reflect. Meaning to say, yung once na yun, uh, one time lang siya nag-reflect. So, meaning to say, yung 1 dito will represent how many times this 0 reflect as a value of your random variable y. Since once lang nag-reflect yung zero dito as your as value of your random variable y, it say your desired outcome is equal to 1. Why is that your denominator is equal to 8? If you try to look again, no, if you're going to count the number of possible outcomes na meron po tayo with this experiment, there are 8 total possible outcomes. Therefore, the total possible outcomes is equal to 8. That's why your probability in your 0, or that will be mapped to your 0, is equal to 1 over 8. 1 because, oh, your numerator is 1 because what should you reflect dito as a value of your random variable y, then 8 is the total possible outcomes. Let's go now with your 1 as your random variable y. Why is that? 3 over 8 is the probability that we map in this uh, ran possible value of a random variable y. So again, if you try to look with this table, 3 times nag-reflect yung, yung 1 natin as a value of your random variable y. Therefore, magiging 3 yung ating numerator dito. 8 is still the number of total possible outcome. Let's go now with your number 2. Yeah, again, if you try to look again with your table here, three times nag-reflect, no? Three times nag-reflect yung two. Therefore, three ang denominator natin dito. That will be your desired outcomes. Eight now is your this, uh, total possible outcomes since there are eight possible outcomes in this, in this experiment. For your number three, as your possible value of your random variable y, why is that 1, eight, 1 over 8 is the probability that we map in this number? Because once lang po nag-reflect, no? Once lang po nag-reflect yung 3 as a value of your random variable y there. To represent the number of tails. Then say, this uh, number of, uh, how many times this 3 reflect as a value of random variable y? Variable y, I mean, no? This will be your denominator. That will be 1. So, since 8 pa rin ang total possible outcomes natin, so your denominator is equal to 8. Now, how can we check if this table is a probability distribution table? 
sabi natin kanina, no? Before we conclude that your table is a probability distribution table, then you need to get the total or sum of those probabilities under the table. If the sum or total of those probabilities is equal to 1, then we consider that table is a probability distribution table. So we need to get the sum or total of these probabilities. Yung nandito po tayo, yung apat na yan. So 1 over 8 plus 3 over 8 plus 3 over 8 plus 1 over 8. Since they are similar fractions, no, they have uh, the same denominator, so we just simply copy your denominator there, there, that will be 8. So we add all your numerators, that will be 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 8, 1, that will be equal to 8. So if we divide 8 by 8, that will be equal to 1. Therefore, the total or the sum of this probability under that table is equal to 1. Therefore, this table is a probability distribution table. So that's how we, I don't know, how we check if the table is a probability distribution or not. By simply getting the total or sum of the probabilities under that table. To go deeper with our lesson, which is constructing probability distributions, let's go with our example number one. So the title for this experiment is Number of Blue Balls. So two balls are drawn in succession without uh, replacement from an urn. Containing five red balls and six blue balls. Let's see be the random variable representing the number of blue balls and we're asked to construct the, the probability distribution of the random variable C. Now, let's try to take note of this. No? Two balls are drawn in succession without replacement. So you need to put something on it. No? Without re replacement. Meaning to say, if there is an urn no, containing 5 red balls and 6 blue balls, right after mo kumuha ng dalawang bola from that urn, no, hindi mo aalisin, hindi mo siya itatabi. At hindi mo, kumbaga, right after mong bumunot ng dalawang bola, tinake note mo yung dalawang uh, two colors na nakumuha with respect dun sa two balls na kinuha natin sa urn. Right after nun, ibabalik mo siya uli doon sa urn. So pagkatapos nun, bubunot ka uli, then ititake note mo, ibabalik muli yung two balls na yun. So ayun po yung ibig sabihin ng uh, in succession without replacement. Kung baga, hindi mo siya tatanggalin doon sa numbers of balls inside that urn. So you're going to, ano, ibabalik mo lang po yung bola na, na binunot mo doon sa urn. I hope that, that is clear, no? So, let's see be the random variable representing the number of blue balls. So, sabi ko nga po kanina, lagi naman pong minimension yan ng problem. What letter are you, are you going to use to represent your random variable which represent also uh, certain, uh, something with our experiment? Now, Kanina, with our probability distribution in every random variable or in every possible values of a random variable, there should be a corresponding probability. So, we're asked now to construct the probability distribution of a random variable C. So, for the solution to example number one, so let's deal with your step number one as part of your solution. So, same scenario with... Uh, the process of how we solve our illustrative example. So, same scenario. So, for your step number one, determine the sample space. Let B represent the blue ball and R represent the red ball. The sample space for this experiment is, so using the two colors of uh, balls, no? Two balls, I mean, no? There's an involvement of two colors, the blue and red, no? Succession without replacement. Hindi mo siya tatanggalin. Kung baga, pagkatapos mong bumunod ng dalawang bola, ibabalik muli yon. Pag bumunod ka, ibabalik muli yon. Then bumunod ka ulit. So there are four, no, there are only four possible outcomes lang daw with this experiment. So this will be your red, red, that will be RR, then red, blue, 
red, blue, red, and blue, blue. So this will be your sample space. Your S is equal to RR for red, red, RB, red, blue, blue, red for BR, then VB as your blue, blue. So there are only four possible outcomes in this experiment. For step number two, you're asked to count the number of blue balls in each outcome in the sample space and assign this number to this outcome. That's why we need to uh, construct a table. No? In your first column, same scenario. In your first column, this will be your possible outcomes. In your second column, this will be your, the value of your random variable C. So it was mentioned in your, uh, no, no, in your problem that we're going to use letter C to represent the random variable, no? That to represent the number of blue balls in each possible outcome na meron po tayo with this experiment. So we're going to count the number of blue balls in each possible outcome. Then for your first possible outcome, since red, red po yan, there is no blue ball here. Then you say the value of your random variable C is equal to zero. Same with your second uh, possible uh Outcome, no? This will be your red and blue. And you say there is only one blue ball here. That's why your random variable C is equal to 1. Same scenario with your blue ball, blue red. No, BR. So there is only one blue ball here. That's why your random variable C is equal to 1. For your last possible outcome, it's blue, blue. So we're asked to count for the number of blue balls. Then... The, run, the value of your random variable C is equal to 2 because there are two blue balls here for your last possible outcome. So let's move forward with our step number 3. So there are three possible uh, values of the random variable C representing the number of blue balls. These are 0, 1, and 2. These, are, uh, these numbers are... Uh, values that reflect as a value of your random variable in your table. That's why they consider it as a possible values of this random variable C. So we're going to assign now, no? We're going to assign a probability value of P of C to each value of the random variable because in our table, there should be a corresponding probability in each uh, random uh, possible value or values of our random variable. Let's go now with the continuation of your step number three. So we're asked to construct again the probability distribution or the probability mass function of a discrete a random variable C. So using this table, no, using this table again, no, we're going to count how many times this 0, 1, 2, and 3 reflect as a value of your random variable C. So in, in this table, you're going to list down first, no? you're going to list down first the number or the possible values of your random variable C. Since here, you know, since here, there are three numbers that reflect as a value of your random variable C. That will be your 0, 1, and 2. That's why it's 0, 1, and 2. Now, what will be the probability that we can map in each uh, uh, random variable that we have in this experiment? So, why is that one four is one point is the probability that we map to your zero? So, if you try uh, to look again with this table, no, once lang nagreflect, no, once lang nagreflect yung ating zero. That's why your numerator in your probability or your desired outcomes is equal to one. The next for la, number one. So again, twice nagreflect yung one as a value of your random variable. Uh, C dito. Therefore, it's 2 over 4. Why is that? It is 4. 4 again dito. Because your total possible outcomes dito is equal to 4. There are 4 possible outcomes. That's why you decide or your total possible outcomes, I mean, is equal to 4. So, in your 1, no? 2 over 4. Kasi twice, twice nag-reflect, no? Twice nag-reflect yung ating 1 dito as your random variable C. Then 4 as your total possible outcomes. So, bakit 1 half? 1 half na yung na nasa table natin. So, since 2 and 4 are divisible by 2, kinuwa lang po natin yung lowest term natin. 
So we divide both your numerators and denominator, no? By 2, that will be equal to 1 half. So 2 over 4, lowest term yan po is 1 half. So please do take note of that. So baka magkaroon ng kalituan, Nick, bakit 1 half? But 1 half? Twice naman nag-reflect yung 1 sa table. So you need to get the, the lowest term, no? Lowest term po kasi ng 2 over 4, yung 1 half. So you need to consider that. So for number 2, why is that it, it is 1 fourth? Since once nga lang din nag-reflect yung 2, therefore, your numerator here is equal to 1. So your desired outcome is equal to 1. Now, if we try to uh, check, no, if this table is a probability distribution table, so we need to, ano, we need to get the total or sum of these probabilities under this table, then if the total or sum of these probabilities is equal to 1, then the table is a probability distribution table. Let's check. 1 point plus 1 half, it's 3 point. 3 point plus 1 point, it's 1. Therefore, this table is a probability distribution table. Hi ho! Those things or things are clear. Now, let's deal with the last part of our solution to example number one. So, let's try to use your histogram uh, to illustrate the probability distribution of the discrete random variable C. So, if you try to look with this one, no? so your zero here will reflect on your x-axis or the horizontal uh, axis. That will be zero. So, your 1 here will reflect here. Then, your 2 here will reflect here. So, doon po na pupunta yung ating number of blue balls, no? In your horizontal axis or the x-axis. So, if you try to uh, assess, no? There is no space, no? In between your bars. So, magkakadikit po yung bars natin. Once you're dealing with your histogram, hindi po siya bar graph. It's histogram. So, may to say, wala pong space or spaces no, between your bars. So, wala po tayong space na makikita between your bar 1 and bar 2 or space between your bar 2 and bar 3. In setting your, ano, in setting your probabilities uh, in your ano, vertical axis dito, no, there should be a uniform interval between between your ano, values. So, dapat iisa lang po yung interval niyan, no? yung difference nila. For example, 0 to 0 0.1. So, ang interval mo dyan is 0 0.1. Then, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, ang, ang difference mo dyan is 0 0.1. Uh, then, going to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, ang difference mo dyan is 0 0.1. So, there should be a uniform uh, interval between uh, your values for your probability. <laughs> Why is that? Nandito, hanggang dito lang yung graph natin for your zero. Diba in your zero, your probability is one point. So if we convert this uh, one point no, to decimal, so that will be 0 0.25. So kaya to nag-fall dito sa in between your uh, in between your 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. Now, if we, com if we convert this one, no? if we convert this one, uh, one half, no, to decimal, that will be 0 0.5. So, yung 0 0.5 na yan is makikita natin dito. That will be the highest point na mamimit no ating second bar. So, if a partner mo lang dyan, that will be 0 0.5. So, same scenario with your 2. If this is 1 point, no, yung value mo is 0 0.25 then. Now, paano natin ilalagay? So, same lang yan. Dapat yung same level, same level lang yung bar 1 mo and bar 3 mo. Since they have the same value of your probability. Uh, but, uh, 1 half lang yung probabilities po nila. That's why yung level nila is nandito lang sa level na to. Kasi if this is 0 
0.3, no? 0.3 to. So, nandito yung 0.2. So, dapat yung level na to is magpapal lang in between your 0.3 and 0.2. So, ganun lang po natin ipipresent yung ating uh, probability distribution of a discrete random variable C with the use of your histogram. I hope everything is clear for this lesson. So let's deal with your activity number one. In your activity number one, determine whether the distribution represent a probability distribution. Explain your answer. Now, I'm going to repeat again. No? Uh, in checking if your table is a probability distribution table, the total or sum of all the probabilities under the table uh, must be equal to 1. So, if not equal to 1, then you cannot consider your table as a, prob as a probability distribution table. So, that's it. For your activity number 2, you're going to continue your, your activity in the first video. You're going to, here, you're going to construct the probability distribution for the random variables described in each of the following situations. Draw the corresponding histogram for each probability distribution. Four, coin, four coins are those. Let's see with the random variable representing the number of heads that occur. Find the value of the random variable C. So you're going to construct the probability distribution and you're going to describe in each of For the random variables, I mean, describe in each of the following situation, then you're going to use, no, histogram to illustrate no, this probability distribution. Again, it's a reminder, no, you're just going to continue uh, your activity uh, included in, your, in the first video. That's why you're going to continue here, no, uh, the construction of your probability distribution table and with the concept of your histogram. So for the summary, the properties of a probability distribution, the probability of each value of the random variable must be between or equal to 0 and 1. In symbol, we write it as 0 less than or equal to P of X or your probability is less than or equal to 1. So there is no values that we can map to your probability which is uh, less than 0 and greater than 1. So your value will start from 0 to 1 or in between 0 and 1. Next, the sum, no, the sum of the probabilities of the values of the random variable must be equal to 1. So in symbol, we need to get uh, the total or sum of these or the summation of all those probabilities under the table, no, and it should be equal to 1 before we consider that table is a probability distribution table. That will be the end. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something from me. Please comment your name, your section, and if you, ha you have your questions, no, please comment down below. Then if you want to subscribe, then click the, the notification bell. Thank you and God bless.